Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. It's Monday, January the 4th, 2021. Our first episode for the year 2021, episode 78. This is Clyde J. Kell, and I'm here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Thank you, too, for joining me for another year of outstanding podcast entertainment i think <laughs> we hope we hope we're not boring our listeners and speaking of our our listeners if you want to follow along for our uh, video recommendations that we use for our discussions please go to www.talkartpodcast.com that's talkartpodcast.com and you see the links on there this, the theme for this week's uh, show is uh, our uh, improving our artistic craft and a bit of our studio practice. We'll talk a little bit about that. And w- one of the recommended videos is from one of my favorite outstanding art teachers is Kelly Folsom. I found one of her videos. Uh, usually you have to sign up for her class to see her uh, teaching videos, but she occasionally puts some up on her YouTube channel. And this one was uh, from her YouTube channel of Paint Along. And uh, what uh, when I started this art journey to get myself up to speed, since I have not had any kind of a formal art education, when I uh, try out a new technique or new material, I spent a lot of time uh, watching videos on YouTube, you know, art painting videos. And I'll be honest with you, the majority of the people that I watch it's very boring to watch somebody else paint, at least for me. But Kelly is different. She does an outstanding job of, as she is creating the piece before your eyes, she's talking about techniques and uh, why you have to paint a certain way, why you use this color, why you use uh, this composition. And it's very instructive. I found her uh, in... Now, this video is a little bit longer. Her, her, in her class, her videos are usually only about 30 to 40 minutes. This one was an hour and 40 minutes, which mm-hmm. surprised me, you know, but, uh, it time went by real quick. Did you two get a chance to, uh, look at Kelly's video? Yeah, I did. It's, I like yeah. the roses. I'm not that great at painting roses. I need to practice more. Yep. Me too. Did you learn, did you learn something from it, Diane? 
I learned something from it. <laughs> um, um, I guess what what happens when I watch other art, since I did go to art school, <laughs> what, I, what I find when I'm watching other artists is that they remind me of things that I had forgotten or things that I don't think about anymore. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I do things automatically and I don't second necessarily, nature. yeah, it's like second nature because I've been doing it for so long. Mm-hmm. So when, she, like she was talking about um, doing the cubes for the flowers. Yeah. That's what that was. I was it. Like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's a reminder to me, you know, of a diff- of different way of thinking about things. And uh, so it's always good to see other artists paint and hear their explanations on things. I, I like her her approach of what she called <clears throat> the accidents. You know, it's just, you know, too many times, and I am guilty of this. I am really guilty. We will either look at a photograph or we will do a setting and we'll start working. And before we know it, we will get ourselves into a frame of mind of going so hard to uh, make that look so realistic that we forget that the whole purpose of painting, what is called a painting is, yeah, you can identify uh, realistic, but you got a little brush stroke, a stray brush stroke here or there, or a little thing that's a little off kilter, you know, that adds adds your style or, or your flavor to the work. Mm-hmm. That is so important. I mean, that I picked up right away. I said, cause I'm guilty. I, if I'm not careful, I'll concentrate now, and that's why I call myself a tight-handed. I'm a tight-fisted, you know, more illustrative. And, and I re- always have to consciously uh, work on loosening up. You know, let that, pen- let that pencil mark go here or there if I'm doing watercolors or, or a uh, pencil illustration. Or let that, you know, let that color run a little bit into the next one. Let that paint, paint stroke, you know, uh, you know fly off a little bit because you can always go back and add to it and, and correct it if it's really out of kilter. And um, that little tips like that just, you know, truly inspires me, which is why I'm, you know, her vital art sessions. I had enrolled for the first time in the uh, fall session, but because of financials, I, I had to drop out. So I already ended up just taking two months worth. worth and, um, but, he only opens enrollments up like quarterly. And tomorrow, the first quarter opens up for the Vital Art Session. And what is so nice, what I enjoy is, is it's all self-paid. She has over 200-some videos that she's created that certain problems, certain objectives, you know, where she describes you know, one will concentrate on placement. Another one will concentrate more on complementary colors and color temperatures. And, and she, you know, as she's painting along, she teaches these. And of course, her class videos, like I said, are only thirty to forty minutes. But uh, it's all when you want to do it, and you, you can look at previous videos. So I'm going to have access. To- yeah, she's got a huge library of of videos that you can you can do when you sign up with her. Uh, just a, a huge, you know. But if there's something you're having a problem with. You can just go and do one of the tutorials that she has and exactly. you can search. Um, help you figure out how to do it. Please. Even if you don't end up painting it exactly like hers, you can, you still get an idea of what, you know, you need to do. Absolutely. And uh, the videos that I missed that I had to drop out, I'm going to have access to now. So I can go back and redo those plus upcoming videos. And what I, I liked before when I took on the course with me, what it did for me was it forces me to do at least one completed painting a week at a minimum. But, uh, you know, I can do more that's you know, accessible, more, more, because she has uh, every week uh, a, a new video for, you know, for that month. And then she has the thing she calls it a, a monthly challenge, where if you've been able to complete all four videos for that month, you post them and they have a private uh, Facebook page. You post them up there and they still select whoever does the monthly challenge. You know, she'll, she'll randomly select and you win a prize. She gives a prize, you know. She also does a, uh, a, a critique video, which is a little bit longer, usually about an hour and a half, of mm-hmm. uh, 
you can submit of your independent work. These are, these are not non-lesson works. And if she selects it, then she will uh, critique. And But it's nice, even if yours doesn't get selected, it's nice watching the critiques. But she goes through and she don't, she doesn't beat, you know, beat the, the artist up. She truly, it's a, it has a good way of the pros, the good and the bad. And, you know, she said every piece of artwork, I like her philosophy. Every single piece of artwork that you put any time in is good. It's good. It may not be perfect or it may not be compositionally correct, but it's still good because you put effort into it. You know, the fact that you took time to paint and she points that out and then she, you know, explains, well, it would look better. And what's what I enjoy. And this is very much where I uh, uh, can tell that she had the same kind of training that Stefan Bauman had. Stefan Bauman on his videos, you know, he goes through and he critiques uh, and he holds up. Uh, you know, the, the works of the, uh, the students and they talk about, she not only does that, it uses uh, Photoshop and she will actually go in and change the actual image. She'll, she'll change the color or she'll change. So you can actually see what she's talking about, you know, the, the recommendations and everything. So, oh, yes. You can tell I'm in love with Kelly Folsom as a teacher. <laughs> well, I'm glad I introduced her to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad too. <laughs> I had seen her. Um, I get pub, I get public television, and I had they have a little where they do videos of different artists at different times. Still about a musician or about uh, an artist or just different things. When there's like a few minutes in between shows, and they put hers. On, they have one for her, and they put hers on. And I it didn't hit me until. <laughs> Yeah. Until I saw her that one time, Dying. and then I saw the thing again on television. I'm going, wait a minute, that's the same person. <laughs> and I was, so it, it dawned on me, you know. So, a, yeah. On two of our episodes, because Diane had uh, had met her, and I guess Diane attended a conference or something. Mm -hmm. she, mm -hmm. so Up in New York, yeah. Diane invited her, and uh, <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she actually came to two of our you know sessions. And then it convinced me that, hey, I'm going to take her class because I can learn quite a bit. This lady knows what she's talking about, you know, and she does it in a very pleasant and exciting way. And it's, it's not boring at all, you know. I can imagine. She puts so much in. I can just imagine after each session, she's probably just exhausted. <laughs> I mean, she just, you know, just a... a bumblebee of fire you know just goes on <laughs> yeah she also like on the second tuesday of the month she'll do a question and answer on her facebook page with kelly and then you know on the what is it the yeah she's one two oh, three four sure. the fourth tuesday she does the group critique where you just it's just something you watch mm -hmm. the uh, other one is the q a so if you have questions and stuff I didn't. I, I get back into the swing of things now that the holidays are over. Yeah, yeah, you know, support, you know, a promote Kelly session podcast, but and I should wrote <laughs> uh, the uh, site down. I think it's a uh, vital, vital art, vital art sessions, yeah, vital art life with, with Kelly or something like that. Yeah, you know? art life with Kelly. That's right. it. But uh, it's a vital art session she has, this, which is a monthly, you know, monthly subscription, and it's well worth uh, the uh, the money. It is well, really. I, I myself, I learned. Yeah, if you're struggling um, with things in still life, well, she does landscapes too, but mainly she's a still life artist. If you're struggling with still life, or if you're wanting to get into still life, she's an excellent person to oh, the print, learn from. Even though she's on, you know, she mostly still life. All of the principles that she talks about is applicable to you can apply them to other types of work. You know, I've mm -hmm. successfully applied that. That's how I judge a teacher. All right. If I can listen to them and watch and comprehend what they're talking about and then go and actually apply it and actually utilize it and it improves my art. Okay, that's a good teacher. That is a yeah. good because you know, it resonated with me. Not all teachers can do that. That's not to say that these other teachers are bad. It's just that I wasn't able to connect with them. That's why I like to 
Yeah, step yeah. In. you have to find your teacher if you can't connect with the teacher. It's not, it's, you can learn so much and then. Absolutely. I mean, uh, so, uh, Constance, what's the key thing you picked up in this video with that the, she, uh, her, her painting video, Roses? Um, just her, she talks about composition and also size and placement. That was one place I was really having a hard time with doing still lifes, I was having a hard time with size and placement on the panel. You know, I would always, so it's really helped a lot in yeah. that, de that department, so. The, the thing that I uh, uh, picked up from previous videos when I was in the course, but also she emphasized it again in, in this video, was I had, a, had a, a problem when I started doing, you know, still lifes and, and uh, is the, the, the background, the, the background behind like your vase of flowers or behind your object, kind of blend it, you know, blend it in a little bit. Don't have it so, you know, so sharp. Busy. Because when you kind of blend it in a little bit, it gives, it gives a certain depth to, you know, to your painting. And when I started doing that, I was like, wow. I mean, it just, you know, <laughs> it's not, you know, it was, you know and it's just a process. I mean, as you figure out what you need to learn or correct, you know, you catch it. You know, that's even like with Stefan Stefan Bauman's tutorials and stuff. He he uh does different tutorials on different subjects and a lot a lot of times he'll even say that. He'll say, Well, I've said this over and over again. It's just that you weren't ready to hear it yet. Like, so now you're ready to hear it, and you all of a sudden want it's an aha moment, you know. So, yeah. And and uh, by being enrolled in this school, I have access to. So if I come across, if I'm working on a piece, and it's not coming just right, I now have immediate access. I know I can go through and look through her videos and probably find a video that will help me correct that issue. I know it. I it's guaranteed. That's my main reason for for enrolling this is so I can have access to to all of her previous videos. You know, and, and so, and uh, that's what I noticed back in in the fall when I was enrolled. It was like, I didn't have enough time to go through all of her videos because there's so many, but it's nice that they're there. It's a handy resource, you know. It's like being able to pick up the phone and, hey, Kelly, I'm having this problem. Can you correct? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like having it right there, yeah, or or come to your studio and look over your... There's, a, there's another artist on Facebook, too, uh, David A. LaFell. He does, he does good videos about artwork also, and he does mainly still... Well, he does still life and figure, but um, he's he's very good. I think Kelly's taken from him. That's not, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I've heard her mention that name. <clears throat> Well, that's like another uh, a uh, artist I like is uh, St Stephen uh, St Steve Houston, and in fact, I was going to I I, I watched a couple of his of his videos. He's starting to put more videos up on uh, on YouTube of uh, his uh, drawing. Yeah, he's more of an illustrator, you know. And and there was a he had a couple of videos of uh, drawing hands because hands is always a problem with me, you know. Drawing, you know, hand. I, and and uh, he goes through, and I was he had a couple of short videos. I almost was going to recommend them, but they were too specific, you know. I said, "Well, okay, maybe next time, you know, when we the next time we want to do a uh, a podcast on our uh, studio practice, we might find a good uh, Steve Houston video." But uh, I like what he, you know, the way he teaches, and he's really into making your drawings action oriented, you know, to show action, you know, and everything, and. Uh, uh, Stephen Bauman, mm -hmm. he said, whenever I said, unless you really know how to draw and paint hands really well, he says, on all your pictures, try as much as possible to have the hands closed. Because otherwise, you look like you got these rake claws. He is so right. <laughs> <laughs> I create claws. I create rake claws. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fun. I know when I was in college, we used to have to do, that was like assignments we had, like, um, I had a lot of life drawing, and we'd have to do our feet and our hands, <laughs> you know, just like different body parts, but hands were a big thing, and feet too. Yeah. I think I about a bunch hands, of drawings on my feet. 
there it is. <laughs> you don't have to look far for yeah, it's handy subject matter. <laughs> Same thing with your hand, t- your feet too. I mean, it's just you know, put your feet up on the bed and lean back and draw your feet there, right there. <laughs> it's really easy. And yeah. I didn't list it as my as one of my goals for uh, 2021, but it's to start start doing daily sketches. I really need to to work on my you know on my drawing some more. Get back to doing my my drawings. That helps me out a lot with my uh, pulp radio art, you know, illustration. It, it can only improve, you know. And, uh, so uh, that's uh, – and uh, Steve Houston, I'll probably be watching a lot of his videos to uh, help me out with, the, with uh, certain areas. The – of this week's recommendation, the second video was Stefan Bauman's uh, podcast about studio lighting. And it completely knocked me off kilter. What he's <laughs> because if you listen, if you watch enough of these videos, they, they all talk about natural light, northern lights, northern light, paint by northern lights, paint with natural you know, light. He completely throws that out the window, doesn't he, Diane? Well, he's he does a lot of outdoor painting, you know, plain air painting. So, um, the, the north light is like the perfect light to paint by because it's more consistent. So if you're in a studio and you have a northern light exposure, that's ideal because mm-hmm. because of that. And it's not a harsh light. It's a, it's a really nice light to work by. But, um, well, I mean, when he's outside, he's got to deal with all different kinds of light. So um, in the studio... The one thing that's nice about working in a studio is you have consistent light where when you're outside, you don't, it's always, it's constantly changing. So you have to work really fast and, or, or really make good notes on where everything's at. So you can keep your shadows consistent and stuff throughout your painting. But when you're working in the studio, you have the luxury of just being able to take your time (laughs) and you can set up your own light. So, um, you know, if you have a window, north-facing window, it's nice. But there again, you only have light during the day. So, yep. you know, if you want to work at night, you either have to have some other kind of artificial light that can I mimic can... the natural light or little... just do away with the outside light altogether and use, you know, artificial lighting. And so, for, our, for our non-artist listeners, why this is so important, yeah. The eye, the our, our eyes, dependent upon the light, <clears throat> the color differently. So, in the case like Stephen Baum used an example, so if you're outside and it's bright light and you're painting bright light, you are going to probably adjust your colors to be a little bit darker than what they should be, more likely. Because then, when you take that painting inside and you look at it, it's like Oh my God, it's so dark. I got to lighten it up. It's because your eye has adjusted for that particular light that you were in. You know, in the same case as a studio light, like I'm predominantly, when he spoke about the artists who work at night, I'm a night artist. I work, I do the, I would say 95% of my creative artwork is done early in the morning. Which, even if I did have a good Northern exposure, it wouldn't do me any good because, <laughs> and so I, I, and I paint by, I, I've got me a, uh, what these what's called these ring lights that I now use and it can adjust for daylight and it can dim, brighten and for, and for, uh, provide a, a natural light lighting effect. And that's what I, you know, I try to make sure that, uh, in my painting session, I remember what setting I have it on, leave it on, and that's so I'm consistent, you know, with my with with my uh, color, you know, color range. But uh, another thing that which he didn't mention, but something I also do before I think a painting is before I consider a painting done, I take a photograph of it and I look at, it, and that tells me right away because the photograph will pick up the color differently than the eye will and will tell me if it's too light or too dark or if my values aren't, aren't correct. And then I can go back and, and, and correct that. So I've started doing that. So rather than just 
go ahead and paint something and then photograph it and put it online right away. I stop that. I take several photographs and look as I go along and look at it. And I also, I have a program that will take a color photograph and change it to gray so I can check my values because that's a big thing Kelly talks about. You know, says a lot of artists have proper value, you know, getting the proper values and, uh, you know, and all these things, all these technical things for our non-artist listeners, these are what make a painting zing or not. You as a viewer. Yeah, that's, the phone, the phones now are so sophisticated and you can get the apps that help you with your values. Um, and even just taking photographs, you can take it and move. If you take a photograph, you can take it and slide it over to the black and white to see if you have the value range you want on it. Um, also, <laughs> while you're out in if you're plain air painting, you can use your phone to to uh, to help you find a place that has, you know, the kind of thing you're looking for, you know, unless, you, you know, as far as value range. For some of some of the artists who may think that using some of this stuff is kind of like cheating. No, it's not. These are tools. The I guarantee you if those guys in the, in the old masters had those tools, they would have used them. Use them right away, but old masters use their own version too. They use yeah. the, the camera, the grid. <laughs> the camera oscura, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is the these tools are based on those on those items, you know, mm-hmm. grids and everything. It was so funny uh, last week, or maybe the week before. My uh, you know my my twelve year old grandson over in Italy, you know, he's a budding artist. Well, he has gotten really into. Uh, <clears throat> doing uh, digital art. I'm so envious. He has a, a digital drawing pad and he's got it connected. I've always wanted to get myself a digital drawing pad. Long when I was doing digital art, I, what I used to do is take a photograph and then manipulate it uh, with a graphic program. But now he's got, he can straight out draw on, on a drawing pad and it, on, on the screen and then you can manipulate and add color and everything. He posted on his Facebook page and note that was so funny. He posted a drawing. He's, this is really not original. I laid a photograph on the top and traced over it. So it's not really original. I replied to him and said, no, it is original because it was done by your hand. And that's how artists always learn. <laughs> well, if it was his <clears throat> photograph, then it was his work. You know? It was a photograph of it, yeah, because he, he likes these action figures that he does. You know, he creates. Yeah. And it was, but what I want to emphasize to him that tracing is, is not, not bad. I mean, artists, there's actually, I've seen, uh, advertised on Facebook all the time. These things called, um, what that Lucy light, which is like a, a tracing light. Oh uh, yeah. You know, uh, it's based on the camera. You need to get him one of those little mannequins so that he can put it in positions to make his cartoons from. Yep. Well. I've already, uh, uh, as a a, a uh, after Christmas present to myself, I hope my uh, uh, fig. I'm going to. I've decided I want to concentrate on figure drawing, and I've ordered two of these mannequins that are really sophisticated—a female and a male—and uh, they've been advertising for a while on Facebook. And they had a uh, they they they're made out of plastic, and they have all the plastic attachments. But what oh, I cool. What I intend to use them for was I rem- I watched a documentary of uh, about Thomas Hart Benton, and what Thomas Hart Benton would do before he would he would create his uh, murals, he would do his figures in clay, and position them, light them, and then do his his base drawings from clay. So he never did a large painting again after he started using clay models. I intend to use these figurines in that manner. I intend to position them and then light them. So I get my shadows and everything and then draw, do the, the base drawings and then eventually do illustrations and paintings, you know, from those. But uh, that's the plan. We'll see if I have the patience to follow through. <laughs> my exhibition in uh, Zurich, Switzerland is going on from January uh, the 4th. It opened uh, today and will run through March. 
where my art is up in a gallery in the Zurich, Switzerland, on a digital screen. I already they sent a picture of the gallery door. You can look in and see all the various uh, uh, display screens with folks' art on it. So uh, that'll be going. So if any of our listeners are in Zurich, Switzerland, stop in and uh, at the Art Box uh, Gallery and uh, send me a note. Take a photograph. Send it to me. See how it's going. Uh, they're they're uh, it's have a you know physical gallery exhibition and also they're online too. They're gonna have a, a, a presence online. So, all right for our listeners, this has been the Artist Friends Podcast, episode seventy eight for January the fourth, two thousand and twenty one. Our first episode for two thousand and twenty one. Thank you so much for listening. And I'm going to say bye-bye to Diane and Constance. And I'll let Diane say bye to everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everybody. Good night, Diane. Good night, Clyde. Thanks for listening. Again, I second that. Thank you so much for listening, folks. And uh, give us a a positive rating if you like what you hear. We appreciate the love. Bye-bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.